beginner. I, mean... I started playing when I was four and a half years old. Whoa. My family is big into soccer. My cousins all play, so got me into it when I was that young. Now tell me a little bit about the legend, because this is just, it's a new team, yeah, a new league. This league just started this year. Uh, Bill Maggi the the owner of, of the league, and just started this year. Uh, it's very, very good, a lot of excitement, you know, uh, fast-paced game. Um, it's, it's fun. Now, when I was growing up, football was the game, but now you're seeing more and more kids playing at, at, at high school and college level. Soccer, soccer's the game right now, isn't it? Yeah, well, uh, I think so. I always thought it was anyway, you know. Uh, I just think that soccer hasn't gotten a lot of recognition over the years, you know, whether it be on national television or anything nationally. And lately, because of the World Cup and other things that are going on, you know, it has been. Can you show me a basic move? I, like I said, I'm a novice, so can you give me some basic moves in soccer that, that people at home can see? Little, like just little passes. Yeah. You can just pass it back and forth. You stay right there. Just pass it back and forth using the inside of your foot, just like <laughs> oh, that. Inside, okay. That's fine. I told you I was a novice. Just back and forth, just nice and trapped. That's fine. One touch. Simple stuff like that is a lot of the basics, you know. What about um, some of, you hear some of these termers, header, bicycle, what's that stuff all about? Well, uh, a lot of the bikes I can't do, you know, but guys on my team can. Uh, headers is just ball coming in, playing across, just using your head, striking the ball with your head. Mm -hmm. And uh, bicycle, obviously I don't, I don't want to do right now, but it's just like that. You're just jumping up in the air and catching the ball as it comes across. Do you worry about injuries? Uh, no, not really. I guess if you worry about them, you know, something is going to happen to you. So you just go out there and play and have fun. Okay. You know? Well, Dan, Chagin, good luck and with the season this year. You got a game tonight, right? Yes, uh, we have a game tonight starting at 8.30. Younger guys play at uh, 7.15. And our game next week is mostly for first place, uh, playing uh, the other team that's uh, up right up with us. So it should be fun, you know. Come watch. You know, it's entertaining, you know. Okay. Thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you, Dave. All right, Beth Willis running around uh, with a soccer ball. like we talked about. Goalkeeper Mark Wolf gives it up at the back to Kailish. Kailish is a 6'3 junior. Got some great size at the back. He's done a great job for UMass. He's been the key to their season and their, their, especially on the defensive end. It is played long and they just missed Matthew Edgerly. He's a key player. He has uh, nine assists. He's an attacking midfielder. One thing about the UMass midfield, everyone has a specific role. Some guys do the job defensively. You've got one player, Edgerly, who's the attacking player. So many different roles that they fulfill. And Edelman, look for him, number 13. He's the guy that does very well switching the ball one side of the field to the other. That's a good weapon for them to have. We saw another player switch the ball very well. Keith Quill coming out out of the midfield and switching the ball for West Virginia. He was playing up front earlier in the year, and now he's gone into the midfield, and it's really helped the Mountaineers. Beckner was looking for Steiner. That was broken up. West Virginia continuing here. They beat UMass 2, two to nothing in overtime in a game played under some fairly bad conditions earlier in the season in West Virginia. And now knocked to the back by Joel Pittman, whose brother Joshua Pittman is on this UMass team. We should point out only two seniors, and neither one is starting. Kenny Smith and Joshua Pittman for UMass. On the opposite side, there are three seniors alone at the back and a junior college player, so a lot more experience. Five seniors starting today for West Virginia. That could also be a factor in this one. Right back at midfield, headed down, taken over by Doyle, looking long on the left wing side. Five is Joel Pittman getting some help on this near wing. Michael Doyle, six-foot sophomore. And we've got a foul called. It is scoreless. We are only three minutes into the first half at Rutgers. Welcome back, everyone, to the Atlantic 10 Soccer Championship. A little bit better than 17 minutes left. Here in the first half of play, it is a scoreless matchup. We have two excellent goalkeepers in Mark Wolf for UMass and Mark Thiel for West Virginia, but neither has had to be really tested so far in this opening first half of play. Doyle looking for Jacobs. Played straight up now by Beckner. Off of a header, they're looking for Nib up top. That was Riley. Kicked away by Priestley. 
towards the far sideline, Colin Johnson. Try to move it upfield, and it's going to go back the other way. We talked about West Virginia's defense being one of the keys to their game. It certainly was when they defeated George Washington. They've been very, very sound so far. UMass, despite having those three dangerous forwards, hasn't really threatened at all the West Virginia goal. And if there's a difference in these two teams, it's that UMass has had a tendency to be more explosive offensively. They've outscored West Virginia. Defenses have been pretty similar in terms of goals given up. Come on, buddy! On that far side, Hicks. Away. Playing it long. Settled by Pittman. Off the left footer, there's Jacobs. Trying to chest it to what he thought was an on-rushing teammate, but no one was that close. Now pushed forward. Edelman was the man trying to help out from his midfielder's position. This is Doyle. Edelman. Pushing it wide right. Edgerly. Colin Johnson, number nine, Four, sending it inside. He wanted Jacobs and the goalkeeper. Mark Thiel will take it. Nice tracking that time by Herzog, the right back. Just wouldn't let Jacobs go through unobstructed and made the play easy for Mark Thiel. Deflected back to the sweeper, Kailish. Off the header and right back to the goalkeeper. Mark Wolf. Last year, the number one goalkeeper for UMass was John Gruber. This year, Wolf has come in and really established himself. He played in 1,700 minutes coming into this match and came into the game with a 1.22 goals against average. Steiner can't control it. Quill with a knock to the right side for the onrushing Herzog. Has Carlson with him, heading towards the right corner. Here's Herzog. Try to cut it inside. And the fake wasn't bought by Dan Shagnon, who knocked it out. Throw in coming up here for Herzog for West Virginia. Down to 14-25, left in a scoreless first half. Herzog had it blocked by Merrill. Spencer Nib keeps it alive in the near side, only to have his pocket picked by Merrill. Merrill number 15 up the left side for Jacobs. Stepping in and winning it was Eric Beckner. Good read by Beckner. You want to stop Jacobs in his tracks before he can get going and do some damage to you. Kylish in the battle. And it goes out of play. West Virginia will have the ball. Michael Smith was in there being very aggressive. He'll get the throw in. That last play was a great read by Beckner. He's playing sweeper for the first time. He'd always been a midfielder in the past. He's had a great season. He's been very instrumental in West Virginia's success this year. Evans played it back. Herzog knocked away. And then cleared up field by Shagnon. Smith chasing it defensively. And won that battle against Colin Johnson. Hicks up the wing. Carlson now patrolling the left side. He's been doing a lot of running on this right sideline. Now to the corner flag area. Blocked by Kylas should be a corner kick. Unless it, no, they're going to say last went off the attacking player. So it's a goal kick coming up for UMass. That ball did go off Tim Carlson. Real nice play by Kyle. She's having a good match, and they need a big match from him because of the pressure that West Virginia is putting on. And there'll be a substitution. We see number 18, Brad Miller, coming on for Pittman. Miller and Scott are the two guys, the two go-to guys off the bench, and Stephen Scott has also checked in. These two players both came on the other night and really did a good job in the win against Rutgers. Scott's a great athlete. You see him carrying the ball now. Notice they both came on, and they both came on with gloves on, too. So they'll be easier to spot, maybe. They'll be the warmer players coming in. Good size, too, for Miller. They list him at 6'1", but he looks bigger. I was going to say that they had a physical dimension that they, they don't have with Pittman and Johnson. Fino, the goalkeeper. 6'2", 180 pounds. Puts all of it into that kick, but it's taken back. UMass lifting it long on the right side. On the run. Steven Scott with a chance to the right wing on his run. He is tripped up. Ball went out, but they're going to go with a corner kick. And we're going to have another substitution. West Virginia is going to make a change. Gisbert, Todd Gisbert, number 14, will check into the lineup. Everybody else, 
Looks like Steiner's going off, and he is. So Gisbert is in. Steiner is out. Saw an example of Scott's tremendous athleticism on that run down the sideline. He has perhaps the hardest shot on Massachusetts' team, and when he gets into the flow, he can be very dangerous. As I said, these two guys, Miller and Scott, give a new physical dimension that enables UMass to mark up physically with West Virginia. Here's Brad Miller on the corner kick, sends it in low. It is deflected, and the goalkeeper comes away with it, or else they would have had another corner kick. Good job to save it by Fino. Waits for his players to go forward. A little bit less than 11 minutes remaining. First half of play, it remains scoreless. The Atlantic 10 Soccer Championship. Nothing like the route last year, the 6-0 Rutgers win against the University of Rhode Island, but we expected a low-scoring game in this one. Up to this point, we're getting it. On the far side, it is cleared away by Shagnon. Out of play. There'll be a throw-in coming up for West Virginia. On the throw for Nib. Bumped there by Shagnon. Free kick coming up here for West Virginia. It's marking back. Shagnon and Priestley have done a fine job for Massachusetts today. Off the free kick. Sent in high. Quill can't get it. Neither could Beckman, who came up from a sweeper's position. Here comes Herzog. Tried to blast it. It was blocked. Back up, back up. And the goalkeeper takes it. Credit Edelman with the block, and that had a sting in this cold weather here at Rutgers. Wolf will give it up short to Kailish. Under 10 minutes to play, scoreless first half. Atlantic 10 Soccer Championship. Number three of the number four seeds. Numbers one and two, George Washington and Rutgers were upset in the semifinal action Friday night. Foul is going to be called on West Virginia, so Doyle will put it back in play for UMass with help instead now from a teammate. It'll be Edgerly instead, and Doyle is going to go forward. Right now, this is a pretty big lineup that UMass has out. Kailish is going forward, too, the sweeper. All set, Edgerly sending in a high long, looking for Kailish, but there's the goalkeeper, Mark Fienel. I want to look for one thing that might change in the second half. The sun is coming just over our backs, and that ball played from the right side is very easy to handle for the keeper. But coming from the other side, where West Virginia likes to attack, it's dangerous. Keep an eye on that in the second half. Quill in a space. Long run for Timothy Carlson. Keeps it in. Plays it all the way across. Here's a chance, but it's off a deflection. Nib looking to settle and shoot. A left-footed shot is blocked. Some good action that time for West Virginia, trying to pound the UMass goal. West Virginia keeps it alive on that far side. This is Nib. Gave it up. Now looks for a return. Hicks plays it inside. On Carlson's touch. Carlson again. The goalkeeper's down. And a couple of UMass players indicated it was out. Apparently it was. And there'll be a goal kick coming up. Goal kick coming up for the University of Massachusetts. Great effort by Carlson. That's using a lot of energy. Really was a great effort by Carlson. Uh, freshman who's just been very, very active. He's worked extremely hard. He plays on the right side, ended up on the left making a run across, and Perry nearly got a chance to score. He's had two goals this year. No assists, four points on the year. Evans, up for Nib. Back for Evans on that far sideline. He is broken up. Goes out of play. There'll be a throw-in coming up. Still scoreless in the Atlantic 10 Soccer Championship. Boy, oh boy, are you gonna get it? You never believe what you're getting into. You can't escape, so you might as well forget it. Just wait till we get out. 